Hello and welcome back to Learn English with Be Global. My name is Kristen and today we are going to talk about becoming fluent in English or fluency in English. So what exactly does that mean to be fluent? What does it mean if you are fluent in the English language? I would guess that whatever language you speak now, you can speak it very easily and you know it very well. That would make you fluent in your native language. The definition of fluent is to be able to speak or write a particular foreign language easily and accurately. And what I've done here is I've put the word fluent and then I have also put the phonetic spelling of fluent, which will help you learn how to pronounce the word correctly, which is another key to being able to be fluent in English. So for today's lesson, I wanted to make it a little bit fun and give you some ideas on how to remember to try to be fluent, the things you need to do. So I've broken it down into spelling out the word fluent. We have our F, L, U, E, N, T. So let's start at the beginning. We'll start with the word F. One thing I can re recommend for you and suggest that you do to become fluent in English is to find friends that speak English. Now, these English speaking friends, they can be friends in the area that you live in, or possibly they're friends that you meet on the internet. Maybe they're even people that you meet in writing the comments on your Learn English videos. You never know where you might meet a friend who is also learning English too, and you can help each other. Another great idea is to find a friend who speaks English natively. They are already fluent in English. Maybe they want to learn your native language. The more people that you can speak with, whether it be online, in person, or while you travel, the more people that you talk to, the better you are going to become at speaking English fluently. So we can find our friends online or in English speaking countries. And another great idea is a language exchange. Maybe even you have a friend that you know that would like to learn English with you. The more people that you have supporting you in this journey to become fluent in English, the faster it is going to happen. So now the next letter we have is the letter L. For L, I would like you to learn grammar. Now, I know that learning grammar in English is probably one of the most difficult things to do. There are so many different rules. Some of the rules are broken sometimes, sometimes they're not. Don't get discouraged and don't be too hard on yourself. Learn what you can. Listen to what other people say when they're speaking. Listen to the native English speakers and how they speak on a daily basis and that's going to help you be able to learn the grammar and understand how people that, flu that speak it fluently speak it by listening to them on a regular basis. So don't be hard on yourself. Even we make mistakes. Most people that I know don't speak perfect English when they're speaking every day. I know that that makes it difficult sometimes when you're learning, but keep going. Look out for the common mistakes that people might make. So I know that sometimes when learning English, you might have a problem with phonetics. Phonetics are really important. Get yourself an IPA dictionary. An IPA dictionary will have all of the words that you need 
and it's going to spell them phonetically so you can learn how to say the word, when to use ooh or ah or a when you're speaking the word. Because in English, it's not always so simple. Phonetics are going to help you a lot in being able to speak fluently in English. Another one that I want you to keep in mind of are prepositions. Prepositions can be tricky sometimes, so pay special attention when you are learning. If we are going outside, we will get in the car. However, I would get on the bus. This is where the prepositions can be a little bit confusing. So take some time to study those. Another good thing to study when you're learning grammar are the irregular verbs. So a few examples of irregular verbs would be cost or make, the verb stand. Those are three examples of irregular verbs that people will often misinterpret and say incorrectly. So if I were to buy something at the store, I would tell someone it costs $3. If I'm talking about how much it costs, in the past tense, I would say, it cost $3. And if I were to say, it would have cost $3 last week, it never changes, it's always cost. That gives you an example. Also with make, I make my day wonderful. Yesterday, I made my day wonderful. Last week, I would have made my day wonderful as well. So the, the conjugations are make, made, and made. So those are just a couple examples, so pay attention to the irregular verbs. The grammar is important, but notice, it says easily and accurately. It doesn't say perfect. You don't need to get it perfectly. You just need to understand. And the more that you find friends that speak English and can learn from them and then study your grammar, the easier that's going to be. So for the you, I want you, oh, we already have a you there. I want you to use your resources. Resources can be anything that might help you learn English better and become more fluent. So you could use TV, television news, reading the newspaper, reading novels, reading children's books. Any resource that you have that can teach you about English, getting into a class, finding a friend, all of these are resources, but there are so many ways that you can help immerse yourself into the language by using all of the resources that you have. So this is an example. Let me, let me do this. We have television. We have movies. Newspaper. Magazines. And of course, English videos. Watching this video today is the first step that you're taking towards being fluent. Use all of the resources you have. If you know anyone who speaks English, make sure you call them up. Make, it, make them into a friend to help you learn English and see if they can help you with the grammar and if they can point you different directions to help you learn English better and become more fluent. Now, for the E, we need to expand our vocabulary.
When learning any language, you need to know as many words as possible. So making lists of vocabulary, checking them every week and adding to them as often as possible, going through and testing your lists, naming things that you see on a regular basis in English to help you remember. Expanding your vocabulary. You want to expand your vocabulary. That means you want to know as many words as possible. The more words that you know, the more you're going to understand. And the more that you understand when you're watching and using all of your resources, and when you're talking to your friends, the more fluent you will become because you will understand what the words are that they are saying. And then sometimes once you know the words, it's easier to learn how to put them together and to understand how native English speakers put them together, which can then help you become fluent as well. So now we come to N. Notice your mistakes. Now I'm gonna put a smile face there because we all make mistakes. I make mistakes, you make mistakes, everyone makes mistakes. The important thing is that you learn from them. So take time when you are studying to notice your mistakes. Notice where those mistakes are, the ones that you keep making on a regular basis, if you're using the wrong verb, or if you're using the wrong noun, or if there's a certain saying or greeting that you just don't understand, write it down. Make a list of the things that you really need to work on. The quicker that you can fix those mistakes and move forward from them, the more that you're going to learn and the faster you will be to speaking English fluently. So you need to notice your mistakes. And another N I'm going to add on here is for you to make sure you have a notebook. I recommend that you have an English notebook for you. Something that is all yours. Make it fun, make it an exciting thing for you to do and have it be a size that you can carry with you all the time. So in this notebook, you can have your vocabulary lists. You can have all of your resources listed out, everything you find on the internet or movies you want to watch or books you want to read. You can have your friend's information in that notebook. Make that notebook your single source that you go to that's all about you and becoming fluent in English. Having a notebook and having that place that has all of your learning journey in it is going to help you so much and be a positive reminder of how far you have come and how much you have learned. It helps to be able to look back and see that first page of the notebook and see how much you have learned since then and how far you have come, especially when you are looking at your mistakes and noticing the things that you're doing wrong. The notebook will help you continue to be positive. So one of the last things I have to say in today's lesson, and also one of the most important, you want to think in English. Now, I know some of you are probably saying, Kristen, how am I supposed to think in English? I'm still learning English. I think in English every time I watch your video. I think in English when I'm learning my vocabulary. What I'm talking about is separate from that. I'm not talking about the times that you are in your notebook and really studying. Of course you're thinking in English then. What I'm talking about are the times that you're not really concentrating on studying English to think about what how you would say that in English. So maybe one day you're on your way to work and you know you're thinking of everything that you have to do today. I need to make sure that I call the bank and when I get to work I need to tell my boss that I have to take the day off on Saturday and then I need to make sure that I call my mother when I get home to see how she's feeling. As you are thinking of these things in your native language, 
I want you to try to think of them in English. This should be a fun exercise to just start thinking in English. How would I say that? What would I do? What words do I know? What words don't I know? And then kind of make a mental note of how easy or hard that is for you. I think one of the problems that people have in speaking English fluently is that they are always thinking in their native tongue or in their native language and then trying to translate it into English. I encourage you to try to learn to be thinking in English because it will become so much more natural and you will speak it more naturally like your native language when you can think it and you're not always constantly thinking of how this translates to this and what word this translates to this. That time that your energy takes and your brain takes to transfer everything over and translate everything all of the time is one of the key things to keeping you from becoming fluent, from being able to speak or write a foreign language easily and accurately. I really hope these have helped you today. So when you are thinking about becoming fluent, you can remember this. Find friends, learn grammar, use your resources, expand your vocabulary, notice your mistakes, make sure you have a notebook, and think in English. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have had a pleasure teaching you. I look forward to teaching you again. My name is Kristen, and thank you for coming here today at Learn English with Be Global, and I will see you again very soon. Have a wonderful week.